Hey folks, welcome to yet another live stream on my gun channel. And uh, I'll try to hop right in because I'm really, really trying to do my best to keep this one short and informative for um, everyone. So, um, as I already wrote in the description, uh, one thing that always intrigued me and that I always wanted to get closer to was finding a way to monitor the consistency and the tolerances of my reloading presses. I have to say um, I made huge progress in my reloading, in, my, in the quality of my reloaded ammunition when I started paying more attention to consistent strokes, to, to more consistent handle strokes of, uh, of the press. And um, where I was really trying all kinds of different ways of manipulating the handle, like uh, giving it, like uh, over, uh, like holding it down with, with, with force, like pushing it down, uh, camming it over forcefully, um, and like everything in between, like doing it very, very gently. And I came to the conclusion by, um, <laughs> I built a little contraption that was accidentally also measuring the consistency of my press strokes. Um, and that really helped me get my strokes more consistent. And I think this is something that uh, every reloader should kind of have like try and uh, see if it improves your reloading especially as a new reloader so let's cut to the chase there are tons of these very cheap measuring stands available on ebay this is one model um with these um let's say uh, I, I love these joints here you have, you've got these joints that are that are flexible in like these these arms with three joints and you just tighten this one screw and it's all locked in place uh, really solid so you can you can loosen this one screw and all the, everything turns and once you tighten this one screw everything is locked in place and this is um, really nice for adjusting this is also how I'm mounting my camera here um, and some other stuff so um, I, bought, I actually bought two different versions, one with one of these um, single screw um, arms and another one, they're, they're really cheap, like 15, 20 bucks. And another one with, um, with like a, a, an upright rod and a, and a horizontal rod, um, like an, an upright rod that just extends from here and a an horizontal rod. So the nice thing about these stands is apart from having a kind of heavy uh, base here, is their magnetic so you can turn on the magnet and uh, it will attach to anything um, magnetic let's try and prove that I'm just gonna remove the the bottom part here for a moment because I want to show you something that that you should do that you should pay attention to when you get one of these things let's just get something metal <laughs> ah, here. Okay. Here, metal doesn't hold, doesn't hold. Switch it on, and I can lift. Switch it off, and it doesn't hold anymore. So this, when I turn the magnet on, it it's, uh, it, it holds on tightly, and when I turn the magnet off, there is a very little magnetic force left. So uh, really nice. You just put it somewhere, lock it down, and it's really in place. It's great, and all that for just a couple of bucks no batteries or anything required um, one thing that bothered me was the quality of these surfaces here because I was gonna put these on my inline fabrication ultra mount quick change plates and I didn't like the surface finish here so one of the first things I did was get some isoprop alcohol and degrease them a little bit. Let me just ad adjust the camera <laughs> so you can get a better view here. Okay. 
Sorry once again for the bumpy ride, but I hope you can still take away something from this video. Um, yeah, I guess this is good enough for me. So next next thing I'll do is I get some nice flat, even plain surface. Put a bit of sandpaper here and just get that surface. Starting to look better. Let me check. This is 360 sandpaper, so not the finest. I still have some 400 grit sandpaper that I'm going to use to um, to get a finish. Some more isopropyl alcohol here, rub this clean. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, can you see the difference here? So this is, I don't even think, I don't think I'm even gonna need an additional touch up. You can see the difference in surface here. Can you see? Okay, see that this is, this is the rough part with all these um, little um, scuff marks here with all the um, strains and this is the part that I sanded down which is really nice and smooth now it's a tiny bit of irritation left on the sides but I guess for the purpose of this video it's good enough for me so yeah this this is uh, one little trick that I really wanted to show you I also did that to my other one and um, this uh, technically there is another surface here in the back that you can use to um, to lock it down let me try just oh yeah then more so this this side also works for attaching um, it to something so if you're planning on using this surface here I recommend that you smooth that you uh, sand down this surface a little bit give it a nicer finish just to make sure that when you have this attached to something, um, I mean, it's you through the magnet. It's going to be, it's going to be um, attached really tight to that surface. And once you move it, you don't want to scratch, uh, scratch it all over. Okay, tighten it down. Let's move on over to the press. Okay, for. For this video, I have taken out the the Rock Chucker Four, um, just because I <laughs> I wanted to take a look at this press. As far as um, consistency um, is regarded, so what I do is I find a nice. Well, we have to move back a little bit. Okay, so here you see this is one of these um, um, inline fabrication mounts. I'm just I just put it on a on a on a flat spot, turn it on, and it's locked in place. <laughs> it's really nice. Okay, now I'm gonna raise the RAM. I'm gonna see if I can if I can get the dial in. OK, 
Okay, so what these do is, it has a little screw here that is going to allow me to finally raise or lower the, um, the measuring tip. I think, I think for the purpose of this video, I'm going to put it on the other side, lock it down there and see if I can, if I can get it installed in a way that you get a better look of the indicator on camera. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so what I found to be really important is making sure that that you're let's see if I can get Somehow I seem to have some general issues with dials. So, let me see, I want to get a bit further down here. I want to get more than like a... Okay, let's see. Well, I think we're all the way maxed out here. This uh, dial has a very short range. Let me see. Okay, we're maxed out again. Let's see if we can use this little fine adjustment screw here to get a bit further up now. What I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get this dial. That's really nice. Okay, so so now when I raise when I raise the RAM, this is right. When I raise the RAM. It's a bit it's a bit tricky getting this fine tuned to be honest like uh, no surprise there because getting in there it wasn't uh, was never a priority for the people who made these presses so you got to be a bit tricky uh, a bit cheeky okay or oh, this one seems to be a good spot okay let's see if i can get better reading here Okay, let's see. So we're a little five. We're, we're almost at the five. I'm going to move it down all the way. Going to move it up again. Well, same spot again. See? Same spot again. Same spot again. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, <laughs> seeing a... I mean, uh, let me just get the... I'm seeing a question in the chat. Um, how many bullets am I allowed to carry in a magazine as a hunter in Germany? Um, 
um, if you are actually like actively planning to hunt with it if you're if you're yeah <laughs> um you uh, you can uh, you can have two in the like correct me if i'm wrong two in the magazine one in the chamber i think is the the, the normal rule yeah see okay so this is um so now what i wanted to demonstrate here is what happens like if I if I just let the the hand if I just do it, let the handle down very gently it stops a bit early if I let the handle down the way I I uh, I would normally do I get a bit closer to that um, number and now let, see what watch what happens when I when I press on the handle now now I press on the handle see this is just terrible. See what's happening here. So this is why you should never press on the handle. Just if I, if I if I let it if I let it sink down just gently, um, I'm getting very nice consistency here. As soon as I press down on it, first of all it, it goes back again. Then it it goes uh, it goes uh, further up. So I'm I'm really m messing up the linkage here. This is where we want to be. Like just a gentle downstroke here yeah okay another thing i would like to look at is what the 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 ram does when when we push on it Okay, let me just uh, move you over here. Okay, so I'm trying to get a reading from the RAM now. So that we can see whether the ram moves when we push on it okay are we okay we get move in this direction and yeah see this is the zero this is when the ram comes up now okay so when we when we let that handle go it ends here now let's push down on the handle holy moly see how that okay oh well to be honest okay <laughs> one issue we have here is of course there's flex in the whole system so i'm i've got the i've got the um the gauge i have it mounted mm, i don't have it mounted on the press itself so this measurement might be a bit problematic let's see if i can yeah I can actually mount it on the press itself so let's see how that works okay now I have it mounted on the press. Okay. Okay, we see there is a there is a, a tiny bit of tolerances here, and when we bottom out, uh, there's not really much going on here. See. No. Okay. Now it's bottom out forcefully. Okay, it's not even that bad. Okay, so most of what we just saw is basically. Uh, was basically induced when we uh, be because the measuring stand was not mounted on the actual press but was mounted on the ultra mount and there's of course a bit of flex between the ultra mount and the press as soon as i apply uh, pressure here so this is something whenever you're measuring just be aware <laughs> what you're measuring from where you're measuring to what you're measuring and what the potential errors are.
Okay, so let's see. Okay, we're somewhere between, say, somewhere between zero and five there. See. Uh huh. Okay, so this seems to be generally where Okay, check. Yeah, I'm afraid there's uh Like these are just examples. See. Um I just want to give you some ideas of what you can do with these with these things what you can do to figure out how precisely your press is behaving when you are applying certain kinds of pressure i also have let's just we can just switch out the um oh no we can <laughs> um we can just switch out the press and try the same with a, um, a completely different press design. Let's see how that works. Sorry, one second. Well, it's almost bedtime, so I'm already wearing my sweatpants. Hope you understand. Okay, let's do some. Hmm. Weird. Why is there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Something fell in here. I was already concerned why there was um, such a gap. Okay, let's tighten this down. So, um,. Yeah, this is a, uh, th there's, there's a couple of different things to measure here. And uh, maybe the most important one should be, let's just uh, get this locked down again. I'm going to lock it down on the, on the, um, uh, on the uh, mounting plate again. Let's move this down. Oh, see, this is a bit more complicated. Let's, um, <laughs> Let's move this one over a bit, okay, so we can get a better look here. This is a bit more complicated because that lever, oh no, we can go on this side. No, no, this side also doesn't also doesn't allow me to go on the other side. <laughs> wow, this press really doesn't want to be measured. Terrible. Yeah, I didn't think about it. I mean, the whole linkage goes back there. How, 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 how? Okay, we should be able to measure here. Yeah. No, we shouldn't. That press is terrible to measure. <laughs> Here. No. Damn it. Okay. This one is not measurable. <laughs> I've done something. I've done something with my, um, with one of my Dylans. And I think uh, for the Dylan is the, the um, for the 550 and especially for for any um, multi-station press, this is really valuable information because not only does your um, not only does the the way you 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 work the handle affect your your press, but um, you will also find out that 
the things that you have on the other stations will affect your uh, your shell plate height and position and this is something i really want to monitor let me just So let's bring this one over and um, so here one thing I find very interesting to keep an eye on unfortunately this press isn't magnetic so I can't I can't um, attach this to the press I have to dip, 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 put this here okay so just keep in mind, once again, I put it here on the ultra mount, so there is uh, some play involved as soon as I apply force, but I'm not planning to apply force here. What I'm planning to measure is... Oh. Oh, we can do it on this side. Okay. So let's move the shell plate up. Okay, so here's here's the dial, and let me see if I can <laughs> if I can get it on camera. Okay, so the dial is basically. So the dial is kind of reading off the shell plate as it reaches the top position. And drip, drip, drip. Let's see if we can get you a good look. Ah, here we go. Okay. Okay. Oh, we've got it pretty much pretty nicely zeroed out. So I'm moving down, indexing. Moving back up, we were just just at zero. Okay, we're at zero once again. This is a C press, by the way, and we're at zero once again. And let's try it again. And we're again at zero. So now let's let's uh, push down on the press. That's really nice. So I'm I'm just letting the the handle go down. You see? Oh well, see we're beyond zero now. So there is always a bit of play in the system. I have the impression from my first experiments that after a couple of strokes, the value kind of settles down a little bit because some of the of the parts that have some move in them are going to uh, find their position. Okay. So now let, let's let's just push down on the handle a little bit and see where the needle goes. So. The needle goes uh, counterclockwise, means I'm, the shell plate moves down. The needle moves clockwise, means the shell plate goes up. So I'm at the at the bottom of the stroke now, and I push down on the handle, and you see the shell plate goes down. So the, sh the, 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 the bottom of the stroke is basically the, the lowest point the shell, uh, like, sorry, <laughs> is the lowest point the linkage can go and is the highest point the shell plate can go. So pushing down on the shell plate is not going to give you, it's not going to like give you more force to um, bring those shells deeper into the dies. That's, that's a very important lesson that I learned here. So if you see, let's try this again, moving down. And I'm, I'm just letting go of the handle now and you can see it's it really it, it bottoms out precisely at the the highest position the shell plate can go and if I press any if I press down on it if I press down on it 
the shell blade goes down again. So this is a very important lesson. It is absolutely useless to apply any pressure beyond the lowest point of the handle on this press. And I mean, I think we basically observed the same thing on the on the um, RCBS. Now that I talk, now that I think about it. Okay, well, nah. I'm again being stupid. Yeah, <laughs> I'm again being stupid because this is m probably not <laughs> what we're actually measuring. What I'm measuring here is I'm actually pushing the, the whole press down and this measuring thingy is not mounted to the press. It's mounted to the... Um, to the um, quick detach system, to the quick change plate. <sighs> okay, yeah. Disregard that, I think what we should still try to take away from this is, let, let me try and get this set up once more. Okay, see if I'm okay it's it's weird. It's still happening even though I've brought the the, the measuring stand a lot closer to I brought the measuring stand a lot closer to the press now. We're still seeing a similar thing happening. I mean either way, no matter what we're seeing here my takeaway for, from this is don't apply excessive force to your press and um, when you start processing press let me just grab a couple of cases Okay, so I'm willing to sacrifice a, a brass case now for you here. Hey. And um, so, okay, let's let's uh, just get a, a baseline first. Um, we're moving just, see, just past like, um, one of these little lines is half a thousand. So this is probably a thousandth past the five. Let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's put one case in and I'm, not, I'm just using the expander mandrel now. Just using the expander mandrel and yeah, we're, we're almost there. We're basically, yeah, we're just, just a hair, just a thousandth below the, um, the uh, position that we got early on. Let's try the seating die now. I'm not going to see the bullet. I'm just going to use the seating die. Um, and oh, see, that's really nice because the seating die is pushing down. It's got a collet, it's got like a, a, a spring loaded collet that is pushing down on the die plate. And let's try this again. If this is uh, we're actually we're probably getting half a thousand more, and uh, but it's it's coming back down again, so not really noteworthy, I'd say. Uh, so this is actually this is actually a very positive result, um, if you ask me. I'm uh, I'm surprised by how little this affects, but these are also very low intensity, very low force operations that I've been doing. The mandrel um, is uh, has been used. Th these cases have been expanded before. I'm just using the mandrel to um, to just uh, let's say unify the necks a little bit. Um, and the, the seating die without a bullet is also not, uh, even with a bullet, it's not a high force operation. I mean, it's um, this is a lot more applicable if you are doing things like sizing um, on your uh, on your uh, st on your um, uh, progressive. Then this is this should be really interesting to get a, a monitoring of how your various stations behave with such a measurement 
when you're doing sizing and other um, high force um, jobs on your press. Okay, uh, I'm sure you c you can come up with tons of, of uh, other ad ideas um, of how to use this. Um, I've, I'm just getting started um, and um, I'm already, yeah, I'm already um, <laughs> getting some disappointments. You see, um, I'm, I'm a bit too, a bit too enthusiastic as to what I can uh, read from this. So uh, always be careful what way you're measuring from and what you're measuring, where you're measuring to, and just make sure that you take the whole, um, the whole system into into consideration when you are interpreting this measurement, especially when you have a Let's try this, especially when you have um, a press that is not magnetic. So you have to mount this stand on something that is not part of the press. Like this press is not magnetic. I can't mount it to the press, so I'm mounting it to the quick mount plate here. And that's the best I can do for um, for these um, demonstrations I did with the with the press handle. I think this is not really perfect, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm. Um, I think for all the other operations, all, all the other things that happen on the press, all the operations that happen on the press, I think this is uh, really sufficient to give me a good idea. Um, I'm, I'm, I've yet to find to find like values that I'm comfortable with. Like um, probably um, I won't be going anywhere if I'm looking for a zero difference there. I'm probably gonna get have to get comfortable with something like two or three thousands and figure out how this actually affects seating depth or something like that. So um, yeah, this is definitely like this station, the seating station is definitely one that I'm going to be monitoring a lot and uh, trying to figure out whether readings I get of this dial here from the from the from this station, whether readings I get um, correspond with the seating depth. So, for example, if this station is two thousandths below what I usually get on a downstroke, is the bullet um, seating depth also two thousandths longer than uh, it was it was supposed to be? And trying to figure out how these values, how these measurements correspond, and um, once uh, once I've got some some confidence in these measurements, I can maybe use them to. Um, work on these tolerances and reduce them and help get even better ammunition out of this press. Because I'm a lazy boy, I want to automate my reloading. I want to get as many things done with a single handle stroke as possible. And I don't want to compromise on precision. <laughs> um, yeah, probably very few people are going to disagree with that general idea if it's possible. I think in the end there's going to be a certain degree of compromise but hopefully that compromise is well within a margin of um, let's say inconsistency or uh, imperfection that I can live with. I mean there's always going to be factors that um, are out of my control so um, yeah I'm trying to get to find the factors that are under my control and kind of nail them all down and um, yeah this is going to help me I think this is a tool um, sorry yeah <laughs> let's get back to the actual tool um, and just wrap this up a little bit because I promised to make it short and short means less than an hour for me uh, sorry for the roller coaster ride here uh, I just want to take another look at this stand and just get an impression of the capabilities. Um, so what you can do with these is you can also... Sorry, sorry I was uh, moving away from the mic. You can also use these with... Uh, like <laughs> These little dials are really cute. I love them. They are hyper precise. They're easy to read. And um, these little fingers here are good to work with, but the measurement range is just pathetic. See, it's got like 
one and a half turn or like two turns each direction. So this is really, these are really finicky to work with. And you just saw me struggle there a little bit. But uh, once you get them set up, I think they're they're great to they're great for this kind of work with the press that I'm planning to do because they're small and handy and easy to read, and uh, very um, very simple tools like. Um, so yeah, I like them. They're like twenty bucks or something like that. Um, but you can also just fit these in here, and uh, just screw. Ooh, <laughs> what? Uh, the weight balance shifts a little bit and um, kind of use them like this for something that you want to measure down here. I don't know. Oh, well, and maybe I'll figure a way out to use this for some kind of measurement and uh, might even be able to zero it out. I right, don't don't uh, worry about the zero here. I've put some rubber O-rings up there. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can actually <laughs> see it is actually possible to read this display on camera i'm amazed yeah so um yeah you can you can put all kinds of like this one this one takes a uh, eight millimeter um shaft um gauges and um, um this little thingy actually came with two different shafts this one's the eight millimeter shaft adapter um this one um this gauge here only comes with an eight millimeter shaft can't uh, you can't exchange it but um yeah this is basically um the other alternative I have, I've shown it in a different video, is my measuring table. And I have to say, this is n this thingy here is not a replacement for my measuring table. The measuring table, first of all, is always going to have a special place in my heart because I love this thing to death. It is so precious. Oh, yeah. Uh, so getting carried away. So um, the, the nice thing about this, this is a very solid, solid C clamp construction with a surface here that is a 100% um, connection. Uh, it's a very rigid connection between this surface here, between this very flat and easy to work with surface and the actual gauge. You might be able to do something similar if you, if you set it up like this and just use this edge here as a surface but i don't know i mean it, it might work as a makeshift solution but it's not gonna be the same um, ease of use and then um, confidence you get from these measurement tables but still um, it's got some great um if you ask me you get you get some great um capabilities here with this tool um, you just have to be creative, and uh, that's what I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks, trying to figure out what to measure, how to measure, um, how to get confidence, and how to eliminate all sources for um, inconsistencies that I can find. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> thanks very much for watching. I hope this was interesting. Uh, I hope uh, you didn't mind the... Um, very makeshift presentation i was j basically just excited that this thing arrived today and i wanted to give you a little impression i wanted to share the impression that i've had in the past days with the other one already that i've been uh, playing around with a little bit and um, i hope i got the one or the other of you excited or inspired to um, yeah get something similar and do some similar measurements on your own thanks very much for watching it's been a great pleasure. I'm always happy about uh, feedback and uh, comments. And um, yeah, see you next time.